The first thing we'll do is turn off the heavy trees, so that the H reacts easier and faster for us. And we fly up inside the room, and we see that there are some kind of cotton wool artifacts, this need to be deleted. We'll find it in the post process. Firstly, in the search, we type post, select post process, and in the search of the post process, we type lumen. The lumen quality of both reflection and global lighting can be changed, but we're going to get into global lighting now. Put the tick for final gather, and 16 will be enough. As you can see, there are no artifacts left at all. I'll put 50 just in case. My video card allow it. You should proceed from your own age and video card. Now the final settings are not that important. 50 is for us to render completely in good quality at the end. Now one is enough. Now let's go to create lights and rect lights. A rectangular light source will be created. We'll rotate it. Press G so that we can see its controller. Rotate it. Raise it higher and we'll also need to adjust its temperature to make it warmer and its intense. To do this, we go out from the house and clear the list. Then in the light settings, put the tick on use temperature and set 3500. It's warm enough. Let's make it warmer. 2500. I'll set the intensity from 8 by default to 50. And in the sequencer, we need to select the place where we will animate our rectangle. Transfer the light from the outliner to the sequencer with drag and drop. And the rect light object will be ready for animation. We have already chosen the place, so everything is ready for animation. The creation of keys and auto keys works in the same way as in other programs. I'll put zero here to go to the first frame. And in the intensity in the light source settings I will put zero. And the next frame where I put the key will also be zero. There is, I put a key with a zero value, it locked. I push the slider, put 50 and we have two keys. So from zero to the first key we will have intensity zero. Until the next second key it will be 50. That is, this way we turn on light. This is how we animated the turning on of the light. Copy the light source to another house and I'll show you how to copy the keys we just created. We copy it. We need to clarify the position of the source so that it's also located indoors. Hotkey for adding a select object to the sequencer is S. And usually you can accidentally press S and add some objects, so keep an eye on this. And that happened to me too. Here is the rectangle object already in the list. I'll just delete it, because when you add from the outliner with drag and drop, then in case of light we already have the intensity parameter turned on. Well, you can also add it manually. Anyway, select the keys of the upper rectangle and copy with the right button. And select the second rectangle light that you copied. Paste the keys into it. We will move the keys of the second rectangle further so that our light turns on sequentially. The light of the first house turned on first and then the light in the second house turned on too. Great, the animation is ready. This way you can animate any objects, movements and their parameters. Let me choose the last sequencer where we had a general view. I will copy it, go into it and we don't need the camera movement keys. Go to the camera, delete the keys, we don't need the camera animation here, because the sun will be animated and there will be too much animation. When we have the sun's movement, the camera movement, this is too much. Therefore, the first thing we do is drag and drop the light source that is used as light. Here we add transform, sometimes this parameter is absent. We added a transform, put a key in the first frame, we turn on the trees to see the movements of our rays. And going to the 300 frame, we will animate the sun. If we type 300, then the animation seems to go beyond the frame. 
and it's easier for us to make it to 199 and make a frame less and then simply if it is necessary to move the animated key to frame 300. Select the sun and rotate it. The rotation will take a little longer because I remind the trees wait a lot and we need them now. Their displays in order to see how the god rays work, how they looked after the movement. We put the key and the animation of the sun was animated from frame 0 to 299. So passing through the frames we will see how the sun moves. Now in real time it will be difficult to play such an animation with so many objects. By the way, as for the camera, select the keys, press 4, make our animation and movement linear. To start animation in real time we need to turn it off as we usually did trees. In layers we turn off trees, just start the animation. Here you can see that everything is happening much faster. It seems to me that such a long movement of the sun cannot be accommodated in 300 frames. So we expand the border to 600 frames. And we need to transfer the final key to the last frame. And the first frame, respectively it moved as it was also selected, we transfer to frame 0. Thus we extended the animation twice. Don't forget to extend it in camera cuts to the border too. You can make even a little more. The main thing is that there's no empty gap in the camera cuts. And so we play the animation. We see that it is in real time and then the camera starts moving. This is because not all of our keys have been deleted. Select them, click delete, ready. You can also animate the camera, but from my own experience I will say that it's better when the sun moves. When we have such a time lapse you don't need to move the camera, because it is too much. The camera is moving, the sun, light, rays are moving. It's too difficult to perceive such an animation is too heaped up. Well, if you want to animate, set the key to frame 0, select the end frame, select the position of the camera, put the key and transfer it at the end. Everything is animated now, including the camera. Maybe it will be fine. You need to watch everything, test different animation for different edges. The main thing is that it looks natural and effective. And in order to make the animation look interesting, in the next lesson we'll make a camera shake inside the Unreal. We'll create a blueprint that will add the feeling of hand shooting, work through all the materials and separately create an animated water material from scratch. See you in the next lessons. Bye.